Good evening, students. I warmly welcome all of you for today's session. So I think we have got a new student joining with us today, um, Himaya Nilakshi. Himaya Nilakshi, I welcome you for this class. And uh, others, I hope you all are staying safe. Um, well, to begin with today's session, first of all, I would like to um, show you about the contents that we will be covering in this uh, information technology section of this foundation program. So as I said yesterday, uh, as I said during the last session also, we will be doing uh, these five units to cover up the information technology part of this foundation program. Okay. And um, uh, I, as I uh, did during the last session, you know that I started with unit five, fundamentals of ICT. And uh, today I'm planning to continue with that section. Um, so it's going to be this chapter, okay. So it's going to be this chapter, fundamentals of uh, information technology in which we, I said we will be learning the basics of information technology, okay. Now, before I start with today's session, I would like to inform y'all uh, some things regarding uh, this information technology part. So uh, I got to know from the admin that uh, most of y'all are uh, from Tamil medium as well as uh, singular medium, okay? So sometimes when I 100% teach you and uh, explain you the things in English, it can be a little difficult for you to understand. I completely agree with that and I can understand that, okay? But one thing, my dear students, keep this in your mind. Uh, if you don't start studying in English language, you will never be able to improve your English language, which is much required for your future. Okay, because uh, it's not that, you know, English is the um, only language you should use or it is going to be the uh, best language or nothing like that. I studied in Tamil medium. Okay, and I know Singhala very well, right? But I used to have this habit of teaching everything in English because I know uh, my English improved when I started doing my degree. Actually, I, I also did a foundation program and then I did my degree. So I can still remember when I was doing my uh, IT degree, there were so many terms uh, for which I honestly didn't know the meaning. Okay, and it's in degree level, imagine, okay? And uh, it was very, very hard. Uh, I can remember like there were some words like parallel, okay? Um, and, um, you know, uh, simple words, like <laughs> simple words in the sense, now I uh, know those as simple words, but few years back, it was all new for me. And I still, I can remember uh, on, in my textbook, on top of the difficult words, I used to find the Tamil words and write it on top of it, just for me to uh, understand the meaning of, what, of the notes, okay? And trust me, it was very, very hard for me to do it at that time, but now I am happy, right? So you will never regret, uh, definitely uh, for the students who have uh, studied for uh, 10 years or 11 years in uh, Singhala medium or Tamil medium, all of a sudden starting your higher studies in English medium is not going to be easy. I completely understand that, okay? But what I'm trying to say is this is the place you are here to learn, isn't it? We are not expecting from you to be fluent in English, but we want you to be fluent in English when you complete this program. Because 
whatever the uh, field you go in, and especially when it comes to information technology, at present, I know so many people who have done uh, diplomas and higher national diplomas in um, IT, in English medium or Tamil medium, and they don't have a way to go forward. Okay, so I, I have seen so many people like that, right? So because this uh, English language is something, definitely it's, it's a foreign language for us. Okay, we have to speak in Tamil and Sinhala. I'm not kind of, uh, you know, putting down any language, but I want you to understand uh, with the feedback what you gave from the last session also. Uh, I can simply explain everything to you in other languages, but it's not going to benefit you. Okay, so if I teach you IT in Tamil or Sinhala, it's going to be purely for business purpose. Just because I want you to have as my students in this foundation program, just to keep you, uh, just to make you feel that, you know, uh, you have to continue with this program. For that, I might explain you in uh, Tamil or Sinhala. But that is not the ultimate objective. If I have to be honest, I have to tell this IT, you have to study in English medium. Okay. If you, uh, if you want, you can even ask from IT professionals because, again, uh, I know like there are, uh, uh, you know, people even in big management positions. Okay who uh, like when they have learned, when they have not got used to these English terms, after a certain period of their life, they really regret for it. Okay, I know one of my uh, friends, uh, he, he's actually much more elder than me, uh, but he was doing the master's degree together with me. You know, when he had to study, he had to translate the whole thing into Tamil, write it in Tamil and then study, right? So it's not easy, right? Okay, so what I feel is that, you know, I, I'm not born with English or, you know, my native language is Tamil. At home, we, uh, we, we use Tamil, but uh, what I uh, feel is that if I had not uh, started using English in my professional life, I would have never learned English, okay? So of course, there are English courses that you can follow, but you can't learn a language just by uh, going through a book, right? Okay, you can't just uh, learn a language from a book. You have to listen to the language. You have to practice the language, okay? So for that only, I'm trying to create the platform here. I hope it's uh, clear. And I don't want to spend more time on explaining to you about uh, why it is so important to learn information technology in English, okay? So I, I kindly request all of you to put a little more effect on concentrating, uh, listening to me clearly, and um, you know, even the notes what I provide, if there are any terms that you find difficult to understand, please put some effort to search uh, the meaning of that word in your own language, refer to it, do reference, you learn, you will never regret for it. Okay, and I believe that my English is not hard to understand. Okay, right. So that is the first thing because sometimes um, even we, as I we have got a new student also, um, you know, for the 40 minutes when I speak, keep on explaining everything in English. If you feel that, you know, oh my God, this is going to be hard to understand. Uh, I don't want you to have that kind of a misunderstanding. That's why I wanted to inform this in the beginning itself. Okay, now let's go to the um, uh, section, the learning what we have been doing. So in the last session, when I started with these fundamentals of information technology section, the first thing I explained to you is what is the system? Because as I told, 
you know, the first thing you have to understand when you are uh, learning about the fundamentals of information technology is that you have to understand that each and everything we are having around us or handling uh, is going to be a system. Especially when we talk about technology, everything is a system, right? For example, like um, if you take even your smartphone, it is a system, right? Your laptop is a system. Your desktop computer is a system. Everything is a system. So the first thing you should understand is what is a system? So I told you in the last session that system is a collection of components that are interrelated or that work together to perform a specific task, okay? And I explained to you this system concept using uh, the school example. I hope you can remember, okay? So in the school example, uh, we saw that uh, the school is a collection of components, you know, such as principal, teachers, students, school, um, school buildings, classrooms, playground, laboratories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are a collection of components that work together in the school system. And we understood that a uh, system performs its operations in this IPO cycle, where it takes some input processes it and gives some output, okay? And if we consider the school as a system, uh, the goal of having a school system is to educate students, right? And uh, for that, we take inputs such as teachers, students, classrooms, etc. And the process we do in the school system is that uh, we do teaching and learning. And from that process, the output given from the system is educated student. Okay. What? And um, then we yeah. understood. Rina Shan, please mute your microphone. Butilaya. Rina Shan, can you kindly mute your microphone? Right, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, the next thing I wanted to tell you is that, uh, so we understood that computer is also a system, which is a collection of hardware, software, users, um, you know, these three main components working together is a computer system. So hardware means uh, it simply refers to the physical components. You know, physical components means um, the things that we can touch and feel. Okay, the tangible components. Anything that we can touch is known as a physical component. Software are the programs that run the computer, or we can say the instructions uh, that run the computer. Users are the people who use the computer, <clears throat> okay? Sorry, so these three things are uh, working together in a computer system, right? And the computer system can be illustrated or can be shown in a block diagram like this, okay? The computer system can be shown in a block diagram like this. So as you can see, it takes inputs, uh, the CPU, what you see here in the uh, green color dashed line, that is going to be the, um, over here, you can see, this is the processor, we call it as the central processing unit, uh, which actually does the processing, okay? So as you can see here, what happens is the computer, it takes inputs, right? It takes inputs, it will process it, and will produce the output, okay? And while processing, or even after processing, it will also deal with storage, several storage devices, okay? 
And the one very important thing you also have to keep in your mind is that the memory, there is a memory inside the processor as well. Like we have different types of memory or we call it as storage devices, which we will be learning uh, in this section. Okay, right. So today, uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play a video for you to understand about input devices and output devices. But before that, let me explain uh, about input devices and output devices for you. So input devices are basically the devices which help you to input data and instructions into the computer. For example, um, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Can you all tell me um, the input input device what you are currently using? You can send me your answer uh, in the chat message. Okay. I need to know the input devices that you are using. Just anything you can guess. Of course, you all are connected through uh, an electronic device now, right? Maybe through your mobile phone or through your laptop. Okay, Riyas Mohammed has uh, said headset. Um, okay. Mariam Isham, very good. Keyboard is the basic input device you use. Using through the keyboard only, you um, give the, you know, you type the words and you send the signals into the computer, right? Uh, and Mariam Isham, very good. Mouse is also uh, one of the basic input devices we all use. Nasla Azmi, mouse, very good. Riyaz Muhammad, mouse, very good. Um, others? So by the way, Riyaz Muhammad has said a headset, but actually headset is not an input device. Headset is an output device because through the headset, you are getting, you are listening to the music uh, sound which is coming out from the computer. It is an output, okay? And uh, Mushfika uh, have said digital cameras, very good. That is also an input device because using the digital camera only, you are sending uh, the video signals or the video inside into the computer. And Mariam Isham, very good scanner. Scanner is another input device. And now I got the answer which I was waiting for. This answer is uh, said by Mariam Isham. Touch screen. See, this is the mostly used input uh, device nowadays, isn't it? Touch screen. Because uh, we don't go and click and, uh, you know, type these days, most of the electronic devices are based on uh, touch screens, right? We use touch screens a lot, okay? So um, even our smartphones, in the smartphones, we give the input signals uh, through touch screen. But remember one thing, touch screen is not only an input device, it is an output device also because the touch screen is a, a special um, you know, kind of interaction or you know, special kind of uh, device connected to any electronic system, which takes inputs and which produces the output as well. Because you can touch and input, uh, input something, you can tell the smartphone uh, which app you want to open or, you know, Anything we you touch and uh, you give the signals to the smartphone. But through that same screen only, your smartphone is showing the output also, isn't it? So those are, um, you know, touch screen is a special device which, which does both the input as well as output function, okay? Okay, now I'm getting so many answers. Uh, Rina Shans have said mouse, good. Light pen, touchpad, touch panel, joystick, light pen, trackboard, mic. Okay, very good. So, very good. Y'all are coming up with the answers. So, simply input devices 
other devices which can be used to input data into the computer. So the first input device which was introduced was the keyboard. Okay, and uh, the other next uh, input device, the most common input device is uh, a mouse. And in addition to that, we have many other input devices such as microphone, um, webcam, and um, you know, touch screen, touch pad, joystick, scanner. There are so many input devices like this. And the, on the other hand, output devices are the devices which can be used to uh, show the output. You know, the, the CPU takes or the computer system takes inputs through the input devices. It does the processing and the process data needs to be displayed to the user, isn't it? Okay. So to use, uh, to uh, you know, get the output from the computer, we use output devices such as, uh, we can say the basic output device we use is the monitor, right? Or you can say it's the screen or the touch screen, okay, which will show the output. In addition to that, we have printer, very good. Yes, Muhammad. Printer is an output speakers, Right, Maria Misham, very good. Speaker is an output device. Anfa's very good screen is an output device. Um, and we also have an output device called a plotter. And um, I think you all might have seen uh, multimedia projectors through which uh, a screen can be shown in a big scale on a big screen or a wall kind of thing. So those are output devices, okay? Right, now, now I'm going to play a very interesting video, which contains actually, which is created by me, by, by, by the way, okay. And uh, it has a lot of uh, beautiful images of all these input devices and output devices. So now I'm going to play that video. You will be able to uh, watch that and understand about input and output devices a little more better, okay. So let me play that now, watch that carefully. Hi student, in this video, I'm going to explain you about the different hardware components that make up a computer system. The physical parts of the computer are called computer hardware and these can be divided into three main categories as input devices, output devices and storage devices. In this video, let's look about some input devices and output devices and I'll be covering the storage devices section in a later video. So let's begin. First, let's look at some input devices. Input devices enable data to be fed into the computer in a form that the computer can use. The first input device introduced was the keyboard. Each key in a keyboard is a switch which closes when that particular key is pressed. The microprocessor scans the keyboard hundreds of times a second to see if a key has been pressed. If it has a code that corresponds to that key is sent to the processing unit. The CPU then translates this code into the ASCII code, which is then used by the computer program. Another most commonly used input device is the mouse. Underneath the mouse, there is a ball which rotates when the mouse is moved by the user and sensors pick up these movements. These movements are then translated into digital information, which in turn fed to the computer, causing the cursor to move on the screen. A mouse usually has two or three buttons, and these buttons are used to make selections on the screen. A newer type of mouse is the optical mouse, which uses a laser to sense the motion of the mouse instead of the traditional mouse ball. Then the trackball. This is a movable ball on a stationary device that is rotated with the finger or palm of the hand to move the cursor on the screen. 
The main advantage of trackball is that it does not need as much desk space as a mouse. Then an input device commonly used in video games to control the cursor motion is the joystick. This consists of a vertical handle mounted on a base with one or two buttons. A joystick gives a more natural feeling of control for motion in games. Another commonly used input device nowadays is the touchpad. This is a small touch sensitive pad used as a pointing device on some portable computers. By moving a finger or other object along the pad, you can move the pointer on the display screen and you click by tapping the pad. Another example for input devices is the light pen. This is a light sensitive stylus or a pen like device connected to the computer. The user can bring the pen to the desired point on the screen. When pen touches the screen, it sends the information available at that location to the computer. Then the graphic tablet. This is a computer input device that enables the user to hand draw images, animations and graphics similar to the way a person draws images with a pencil and paper. These tablets may also be used to capture data or handwritten signatures. Then an input device used for recording sound and voice communication through a computer is the microphone. This can be used to input sound into the computer. Another input device is the camera. Digital cameras store the images digitally rather than on film. Digital cameras can be connected to a computer and the pictures taken on them can be transferred while digital motion cameras or webcams can be used to create video. These are very much useful for video conferencing purposes. Then the scanner. Scanners generally convert text drawings and photographs into digital form that can be stored in a computer and then manipulated. Both black and white and color scanners are available. There are special purpose scanners such as fingerprint scanners which are used to scan fingerprints, barcode readers which are used to read the zebra striped marks found in products, optical mark reader which reads pencil marks on forms such as surveys or test answer forms, then optical character reader, which is where the text on a page is scanned and then converted and fed into a word processing package so that it can be modified according to the needs of the user. Then the magnetic ink character reader, which is used to recognize characters printed in special ink, such as check numbers. Now let's look at some commonly used output devices. Output devices translate information processed by the computer into a form that either humans or other machines can understand. Output can be printed on paper or other permanent media, which is called a hard copy. Also, it can be displayed on a screen or output by other non-permanent means, which is called a soft copy. The most commonly used output device is the visual display unit, which is commonly known as the monitor. Monitor is the device that display the computer's output to the user. The quality of a computer monitor can be determined by three main properties. Those are resolution, the number of colors it can display, and the radiation output. There are three main types of computer monitors such as CRT monitor, LCD monitor, and LED monitor. Another commonly used output device is the speaker. Speakers are used to get sound output from a computer. There are different types of speakers ranging from simple speakers, which provide simple sound, to high quality printers, which can provide theater-like surround sounds. Then a plotter is a specialized output device designed to produce high quality graphics in a variety of colors. This uses a pen that moves over a large revolving sheet of paper. Plotters are especially useful for creating maps, 
architectural drawings and advertising banners. Another very useful output device is the projector. A projector is an optical device that projects an image or moving images onto a surface, commonly a projection screen. Most projectors create an image by shining a light through a small transparent lens, but some newer types of projectors can project the image directly by using lasers. Another commonly used output device used for the purpose of producing a physical copy or hard copy of the computer's output is the printer. According to the technology used in printers, they can be categorized into two as impact printers and non-impact printers. Impact printers create an image by using pins or hammers to press an inked ribbon against the paper. The most common type of impact printer is the dot matrix printer. Dot matrix printers can produce sheets of plain text very quickly. And these printers are cheap and have the lowest running cost compared to any other type of printer. As the head moves across the paper, the correct pins are fired out to hit an inked ribbon and form the shape of the character required. The more pins that a printer head contains, the higher the quality of the printer. The main drawback of dot matrix printer is that it produces unwanted noise while printing. On the other hand, non-impact printers create an image using other means. Three most common non-impact printers are inkjet printers, laser printers, and thermal printers. Inkjet printers can produce high quality text and graphics. They are quieter than dot matrix printers. They create prints using tiny nozzles to spray droplets of ink into the paper. Then the laser printers offer high speed printing and an excellent quality of text and graphics. A laser beam is used to form an image on a rotating charged metal drum. This 